welcome to my Minimax channel. Today I, uh, um, I've got my um, leading edge laminations um, done for the uh, uh, vertical stabilizer, for the horizontal stabilizer. We've already built the vertical. And so what I'm doing is um, I've got them cut down to the one inch, the one inch width um, that they need to be in uh, this direction. And so they're both uh, they're both the same, and then I just made a uh, I made a just a quick sketch of the of the profile um, the round leading edge on the uh, front side, and uh, the method I've decided to use is I'm actually just going to make some make some chamfer cup cuts, uh, and I'm just starting with a uh, with a 45 degree. 45 degree cut that will take off the corners um, and then I may uh, I may back off and then take another swipe at it just to get some of the material removed before I even uh, before I even uh, put it together then I'll have just a lot less uh, work to do with the plane I'm gonna go ahead and use the same method I used on the other one using the plane and uh, sanding so um, I considered using the router and doing some other things, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. So I'm going to cut those real quick, and uh, we'll make a couple of a uh, couple of passes with that. And then I think I will take the uh, our little blocks for the uh, static system are um, are cured, so we'll be able to actually take those and uh, get those uh, epoxied in place. We'll see if we can't knock this out. All right. All right, so I got both of those. Uh, I got both of those cut. Now I'm gonna uh, actually reset the blade, and I'm gonna take this corner off of each side, which will get me a little bit closer to the uh, closer to the center line. Then I'll have a much easier job of getting that rounded off um, when the time comes, which will be excellent. So let me get the uh, let me get the saw reset, and uh, and we'll run these two through one more time. All right. All right. So now I get to uh, actually start with something that is already um, almost uh, completely rounded off. Just have some facets to uh, facets to remove, and uh, we'll be in uh, we'll be in really good shape with that. That won't take long at all to shape that up. So just running that through the saw a few times, um, fix this right up. And uh, now we can get these uh, get these cut to size. All right, so now all I got to do is uh, just get my lines lined up here. start by cutting these outside edges first, uh, the tip, tip portions, and then we'll come back and do the, uh, the other portion.
right, so I've got the uh, uh, I've got the leading edge pieces um, fit nicely now. I've got um, I have the uh, spar um, actually uh, cut to size. So now I'm just going to get this blocked in place, and I'll get these blocked in place, and then that'll allow us to start fitting the uh, the members here. We got two on the tip here, and then one, one center one and then one one and one um, but there's some other pieces that need to get attached to the spar as well so those have to go on first so we'll do those um, we'll do those next and i'll get the plan here Alright, so six and seven are the main two um, that we're working on, and you can see we've got the we have the spar right here, and then we have a doubler um, that's on the front side of the spar. And it says to C um, C E on drawing seven to show us exactly what that looks like. So that's right here. It's made out of RS10, and um, it is. Uh, actually, there might be two. There's actually two pieces to that doubler. Um, uh, one of them looks like it's 8 inches long. The other one looks like it's 26 inches long. This one gets a uh, this one gets a taper on the end for the last five inches on either side. So we'll get these uh, two pieces cut. Um, one at 8, one at 23. I'm just doubling these because it's taking us to the center line. So. Uh, uh, one at eight, one at twenty-three, um, and then we'll uh, we'll work on tapering the tips on that, and uh, then we'll be able to um, figure out what this center spar uh, size is. So let me uh, let me get this just quickly. and get some blocks in here.
sorry to um, those are blocked in place now and so I can I can uh, get this piece cut here and it basically it's 26 inches I believe because it fits right between um, these two these two members here these two going right here uh, so we'll see what that just double check that measurement and see how that works out and it's 26 so just line this up with the inside edge here and then we'll pop over here and we'll make a mark where we need to cut it on the inside edge here and then that should be uh, 26 inches Six. Uh, we'll mark the center line, which is right there. Grab a pencil here. Let's measure that twice just to make sure. 13. Where the taper is at five inches, I'm just going to go ahead and mark the uh, mark that location as well. Um, All right, so basically this is what we got. We got a 26 inch piece. That's the center line. Uh, this is five inches where the taper starts. It actually stops an eighth of an inch before the edge here. I'll mark that once I get this side cut. This is the scrap uh, drop that I have to take off. So I will uh, cut this off. We'll mark the eighth of an inch. And then I believe we'll do this on the taper jig. So uh, yeah. All right, so I know you've, uh, if you're um, not new to the channel, you've probably seen this before, but um, I thought I would go ahead and show you. This is how my, uh, this is how my taper jig uh, works. You just clamp your piece in uh, here, and I could, I could pull it in a little bit with a, another clamp as well, which I may, I may actually do. Um, but it just rides in the slot in your uh, saw, and all I have to do is take my marks. Um, I've got my eighth inch, uh, what's going to be left, eighth inch there. This is where the, uh, this line is where the blade will start. It'll cut that taper for me. It'll be really nice and easy. And uh, all I got to do is uh, turn the saw on. This edge has already been cut to my band saw, or my table saw, so it follows that edge. And I just run this through and stop it when it cuts all the way through so we don't cut into the board here but um, and then we have a uh, we've got a perfect taper so all right let's cut one
Okay, so we got these two pieces cut uh, right here. Um, this bar doubler, and then uh, we've got this piece here, which goes right there. And then um, now we'll cut the uh, RS-10 that goes right in the middle here. So this one will get cut to fit, uh, gets cut to fit right here now. So um, what I'll do is uh, I'll take a measurement. I don't, I don't remember what this angle is. Um, so I'm just gonna measure that real quick. Cause it's gonna be that angle on both sides. And what I'm actually gonna do is cut the angle first and then I'm gonna jump to uh, cutting it square on the back side there, so. All right, so our angle is 90. So it's about 34 and a half degrees. So we'll take a scrap piece and uh, test that real quick and see how that works out. All right, so I cut that at 34 and a half, just a scrap piece, just to see how we uh, fit in here. Um, and uh, it's actually a perfect fit, so. So now we'll take our actual piece. And I'll go, uh, I'll go cut that. And then we will, uh, we'll stick it in here and then cut it square to fit the, uh, the back there. All right. All right, so I've got a, uh, got a perfect fit uh, here now, um, here and uh, back there, you can see the three pieces that uh, come together, the center piece. And what I would kind of like to do is, uh, before I actually mount this thing to the, uh, um, glue the center piece actually to the frame, it would be great if I could actually get the, uh, if I could get the vertical stab um, in position and pre-drill those holes. Um, in order to do that, this piece actually needs to have a couple of uh, members glued to the side of it, um, mostly where where the uh, holes go through in the open frame here. We've got plywood on the forward side, so there's a nice lamination there, but back here we've actually got uh, just the open member that has plywood uh, through section B, which is right here. It does have plywood um, top and bottom, like that, eighth inch ply, and it only goes back to um, basically four plus 13 plus two, goes back to there, then it stops. And But the plywood on the bottom actually carries all the way through, so, uh, just have to follow that as I go through that. Um, it's RS-651. Yeah, so we'll figure that out. Okay, so I figured it out. The notch is actually to receive this bottom plywood right here. That's why it's a quarter inch, quarter inch deep by an inch and a half wide. This piece of plywood, I think, if I remember right, I may have had that cut with my laser cut stuff. Um, I'll take a look here and see if that's the case. That would be eighth inch fly. Quarter ply. Aha. All right, 
right, so I've got it right here out of eighth inch ply. So that piece is already cut. So we're all good there. So that's just to receive the eighth inch ply that, uh, that goes along the bottom. Whew, that's nice to know. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that may be the one that I actually cut wrong the first time at sixteenth of an inch because I saw one of those in there as well. So now, um, I think what I'll do is I'll take my measurement for where this front hole is going to be um, on the stab and then we'll use the stab itself to come up with the second hole. And the first hole is... Uh, I'll just show you here. We have to come back uh, uh, four inches to the front hole and then it should be 13 inches to the other hole. But we'll actually use the stab to determine this one. So we're going to center up a 3 16 hole four inches back from the very front so so let's put this on four inches here and we'll do it this way Looks like it puts it about right there. Now let's grab the stab. See if we can guess at where that's going to line up at here. So it would be somewhere in that region, which keeps it sitting pretty much on the flat part of uh, the flat part of the front of the stab here, which is great. Uh, right before where the radius starts, so that's where I believe it should be. Um, which just means that basically it sits like that, uh, like so. Maybe a little bit forward of that, maybe right there. But anyway, Let's take a look. Uh, this just seems like something that's going to be a little more challenging later. So while I have can put it on the drill press and do it now, would definitely be the time to do it. So All right, I'm going to measure to the center of the hole from the front here. See what I end up with. All right, the center of the hole is three and half inches from the front of the stab. So three and a half. Three and a half puts me right. Right there. Yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. Okay. So now I'll find the center of this location and I will uh, get the drill press. We'll drill a 3 16 hole straight through there. We'll put a bolt through into the stab and then we'll we'll rotate the stab to score the wood um, just a little bit on the back here to find out the exact location of uh, of that. So, all right, let's do this one first, and then we'll do the next one.
Okay, so I just inserted a uh, just inserted a nut, um, a nut. I inserted a bolt in here just so I can get to um, slip into this front hole, like so. And then I have a uh, a five thirty two drill bit actually fits perfectly in the. Uh, in the, uh, the lock nut here. Now I can use the drill bit. I can use the drill bit. While that's gonna rotate on the front hole, I can use the bit to just score the back here. Now we have a nice, uh, nice mark here, where I can center up on and uh, and drill the second hole, and then we'll test the fit of that and see uh, see that they both line up well. So let me uh, find the center and. First, I'll just kind of make my mark here. It's going to be like right here. There's an arc there, sort of. Alright, so I've got my mark. We'll grab the center punch. Make sure we're right on that mark and right in this little groove. And we will go Drill that 3 16 hole. <clears throat> Alright, so I just dropped, dropped a couple bolts. I actually don't have the 3-23s that I need to actually go up to where the... all the way in. Um, but I can tell you that, uh, that we have a really nice exact fit here. They just drop right in there, so uh, I feel super good about that. That will put us... Uh, it's more nice and centered. On the uh, on the stabilizer, and we will uh, we will be uh, in really great position now. Because once we get this in, we'll put the uh, plywood on this top side, then we'll be able to go to the bottom, drill back through. Um, and I think on the let me get these out. Okay, so we got that, and now. What we will do is back here by the rear section is where we get this. Uh, we get these doublers right here on the uh, on the sides, and those are uh, basically it's a three-inch piece with uh, 45 on each side, and it's RS17, so um, it's the stuff we're using. We'll be able to use some of our scrap pieces for that. And since we're going to be um, epoxying these to the rear spar, um, and uh, we'll probably go ahead and epoxy these together right here at the front. Um, we'll be able to epoxy these two pieces on. I may wait to epoxy these. I'm just going to do the rear spar uh, for now. And and then besides the rear spar, we'll get some, we'll get a couple scrap pieces of, uh, of this material. And that will be our doubler um, back here. And we'll cut uh, two three inch pieces. And then we'll be able to, uh, we'll just 45 the edges of those. We'll draw a center line. And uh, let's see here. 
So three inches is here, uh, inch and a half is here. We'll just go to the other end. And, uh, inch and a half is here, three inches is here. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll just draw these center lines here. All right, let me go cut these two pieces out. Okay, so those two uh, pieces just uh, center up on here. So we end up with uh, one of these on uh, each side. Let's get our let's get another line here. All right, let's get one on this side. And we get one on this side. So we end up just like that. And those are flush to the bottom. At any rate, those are ready to epoxy into place. So we can now we can now epoxy uh, these together. We can epoxy those three pieces back there together, and we can grab our two pieces here, and we can epoxy these where they go on here. So. So we will we'll mix up some epoxy and we will get uh, all of that put together. And yeah, and that'll be super cool. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me today. That's it for this uh, session. And um, what we got uh, done today is we got these uh, static ports um, epoxied into place. Um, we got uh, the, uh, the, this drilled out for the vertical stab. We got the three uh, doublers back there put together. And uh, now we'll be able to cut these members here and get this whole thing going. And uh, that'll be great. I'm kind of excited. Tomorrow, uh, my son um, in uh, Palmdale, pretty close to me, is actually going to be, he moved out here from Daytona Beach a few weeks ago. And um, he's kind of excited to come and help me with the plane. And uh, dad is excited to have his help. So, so we'll have another face in the video. So um, yeah. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of these episodes. And uh, I'll catch you later.